guy seventh here. Now this one I'm going to make a little bit longer than 10 minutes because I've got some stuff I want to cover with this one. In 10 minutes I wouldn't quite cover it. Uh, I'm sorry that I haven't <coughs> been around uh, lately. Uh, I've got uh, a rather bad case of, un of uh, bronchitis which is why I'm talking at a lower volume than I normally would because I'm trying to keep the cough from taking over during the vid. Uh, this is Rainbow Moon and as you can see this is a game that harkens back to uh, a more old-school Japanese strategy RPG type of vein. It's made by SideQuest Studios, a German developer who's perhaps best known for their popular Soldner X series for the PSN. This is a PSN exclusive that runs $14.99 and for that $14.99 you're gonna get a minimum of over a hundred hours of gameplay out of this thing. Uh, there's a lot of value for that $14.99 if you have the patience to play this type of game. Uh, like I say, it harkens back to games like Final Fantasy Tactics, sh the Shining Force series, especially Shining Force 3 on the Saturn, uh, games like Cardia on the P on the original PlayStation 1, that type of thing. Disgaea is a good modern example, the uh, Disgaea series. Uh, the graphics are not really JRPG inspired, I mean, honestly, the kind of look of it almost reminds me of Torchlight in some ways, where it's got kind of a cartoony uh, feel to it. Uh, they're very bright, very colorful graphics. Uh, I don't have a problem with the graphics at all. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second. It's a very nice looking game for what it is. Uh, the music can be a little bit repetitive. It uses a lot of the same musical tracks over and over again. Uh, one place where this game fails is in the story. There is a story to the game. Uh, you know, the main character is sucked into another world by an evil wizard and he has to try to find his way back and he makes friends along the way, etc, etc. But most of the missions that you go on don't seem to really add a whole lot to the plot. You know, there's not really any character development that you'll see at all. It's basically you go to a town and you meet the mayor and he says, "Hey, uh, we need uh, we've got another gate that can get you to another part of the level so you can get another uh, piece to uh, open up the main portal that'll take you back to your world, but we don't have it. It's stored in such and such a place. You need to go find it." So you'll find out all sorts of information about uh, people that live in the towns that you visit and whatnot, but you don't really get any character development of the actual playable characters that you get. Now there's a total of six different characters that uh, you can add to your team through the course of the game but here's the catch. You're only allowed to use three of them at a time and the three that you're not using unlike some of the Final Fantasy games for example do not level up uh, when you fight. If they're not on your core team that you're using they don't level up they just sit there so you'd actually have to equip uh, add them to your team and then grind with them to get them leveled up and grinding is something that you will uh, you will get very used to in this game because especially once you get farther into it I'm about 30 hours in you will run into some beasts that you simply don't have the power to kill and so you'll have to walk around killing guys until you get yourself leveled up or you can go the cheap the, you know the cheap noob route because this game due to the day and age that it's in, you can go onto the PSN and actually buy packs of experience where you can buy packs that give you, you know, 50,000 gold for every character and uh, 50,000 rainbow pearls. Now, rainbow pearls are these little things that you earn when you defeat enemies and they're the currency that you use to level up your different stats, like your strength, your magic, etc etc and uh, you can actually go to PSN and pay six dollars and get fifty thousand of those pearls for use with leveling up your your characters in addition you also have special skills and abilities that you can earn through the game and those have their own level up bar so the more you use them the more powerful they become <coughs> excuse me so getting back to the uh, the point about only being able to use three characters uh, later on in the game you'll run into fights where there's you know over 30 enemies on one grid to have to defeat 
and when you've only got three characters uh, this can take a while so you you know later on in the game you'll get into fights that'll take 15 20 minutes just to finish one fight it, it would have gone a lot smoother had they allowed you to use all of your characters or at least you know four out of the six because when you look at a game like Final Fantasy Tactics that came out you know uh, 15 years ago or what have you and you're able to have a fairly large amount of characters on the screen at one time from in the, in the battles it makes you wonder why with a game that's just come out last month they can only manage three uh, playable characters at a time and, and I know that that's the standard with games like Final Fantasy the Final Fantasy series for example but that's not really the standard with this style of RPG so it makes me wonder why they went that route uh, other than that I think it's a great purchase for your uh, your gaming dollar. Like I said, uh, there's easily over 100 hours of gameplay in this game, and uh, a very a fairly large trophy list for you trophy hunters out there. In fact, this is one of the few PSN games that does have a platinum trophy, but it's going to take you a while to earn it because one of them is uh, getting one of your characters up to level 500. Uh, I've been playing this game for 30 hours, and my highest level character, I think, is level 31. So you're talking about a lot of grinding to get there. But uh, for those of you who like this style of gameplay, uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I mean, you'll definitely get your $14.99 out of it. And uh, of all the strategy RPG games that are out there in this style that have come out for this gen, I think this is... Uh, as, as far as a downloadable title goes, it's the best of the bunch. I mean, I definitely like it better than the uh, the Vandal Hearts game that came out a uh, couple of years ago. It, it just plays a lot smoother and it's more fun, if you ask me. But, there are a couple of other things that keep it from getting a perfect score, which I'll get into right now. When maneuvering around on the map, you sometimes your character sometimes has a tendency to not go the direction that you want to go and uh, so you'll end up going the wrong way and of course movement on the map acts as one of the actions that you can take during your turn and you don't have the ability to cancel your move so if you move in the wrong direction there's not a cancel button that'll put your character back to its original point so that you can make the correct movement you're just stuck with your character being in the wrong place and now not having a full action bar for doing uh, any attacks or what have you the other problem I have is that uh, I've noticed this especially since I've been playing it for about 30 hours now there's not a whole lot in the way of enemy variety uh, after you've played the game maybe 10 15 hours you will have basically seen every enemy type that this game has to offer short of boss fights I mean there's maybe six or seven different styles of enemy more or less and the rest of them are just uh, basically color swaps or bigger versions of the characters that you've already fought so for example these slimes that you see on the screen now You'll see bigger versions of them. Uh, there's yellow, there's blue, there's red. Uh, I think there's even a, a few that are green, uh, if I recall correctly. And it's that way with pretty much enemy, every enemy type you'll run into. A lot of them are just retreads of uh, critters you've already fought earlier on in the game. So that could have been a little bit better. And uh, kind of uh, adds to the, the grind feel of it. You know, it does get a bit repetitious for people that aren't used to this style of gameplay. But uh, if you can cope with that, and this is the kind of thing that appeals to you, that's by no means a new problem with this particular style of game. I mean, if you play some of the older iterations of this style, especially the old Shining Force games, this is something you'll run into a lot as well. It's just that with this being 2012, and this game being the size that it is you would think that by now they'd be able to put a little bit more into the enemy variety than what they have now as you can see when you're walking around on the overworld map uh, you can there are little uh, monster fights that block your way 
which you'll have a, a an orange encounter screen when that happens as opposed to the regular blue one and then you have what are called random encounters where you'll be walking around and a little text box will pop up that says so many enemies of so of this style so it'll say you know like three bees two slimes etc etc and you can choose to hit X and, and do that fight or you can just keep walking uh, those are good for grinding and there is a trophy for uh, def winning 50 random encounters so you know I wouldn't avoid them too much if you're looking to get the plat on this game uh, because they'll definitely uh, help out in a number of ways now this guy right here I like not my main character but the big guy over on the right I like using him because he has a lot of uh, special attacks that will uh, hit multiple enemies at once and uh, you can actually move the uh, field of effect around to maximize how many guys you can hit at one time so uh, he uh, I get a lot of play with him uh, the uh, girl I use a lot because she's an archer so I tend to keep her back in the background because I can hit uh, enemies from a great distance and of course my main character he has some of the most powerful attacks so that's uh, it really goes a long way towards crafting your strategy knowing uh, how your uh, how you can move around the uh, attack area when you're selecting your your skills to use so there there is a good bit of strategy to it even though you're only able to use three characters at a time but uh, bottom line this game is definitely worth the fifteen dollar investment it's not uh, the best of this genre that I've seen but as far as downloadable games it's probably the best one that's been released this gen as far as new original Japanese style strategy RPGs even though it's German so uh, I'd have to give it a 5.5 out of 7. Lots of new stuff coming as soon as my throat is better guys so keep an eye on your sub box. This is 7th.